Well, this week, we're going to talk about how art making can help others. We're going to discuss this question with Trevor Romaine. Trevor is a South African artist and a writer and a comedian, and he uses drawing and journaling to help children in need. He's created loads of best-selling books and films dealing with childhood issues, challenges like bullying and stress, and divorce, even grieving and death. He's the president of the American Childhood Cancer Organization. He works with the United Nations to help former child soldiers and refugees in the war-torn parts of Africa. We talked right after he came back from a tour of U.S. military bases working with children of wounded veterans. You know, as long as I've known you, you've always been uh, a great believer in the kind of transformative uh, uh, power that art making, that journaling, that illustrated journaling can have. And often a lot of the kids that you've spoken to are kids who are particularly uh, impacted by something, traumatized by an event, by illness, and so forth. I wonder if you could just tell us what can we do, or can anybody do with art that will make a difference in their life? And also, how can they share that with other people to help them overcome the things that they may be facing? I found the best conversations that I've ever had with any child is when you sit down with two pieces of paper and you start to draw and the conversation starts. I, I know you had that with, with, with Jack when, you, when, when he was a kid. Because for some reason, it, it, when you are sitting there and, and unlocking your creativity, it unlocks channels of conversation and it can be very, very powerful. I'll give you an example. I was at a refugee camp in uh, the Congo a while back. So I went in there. I was going to change these children's lives. It was going to be kumbaya. You know, I, was, I thought I was so important. Danny, I thought I was, the, I was the best. They put me in this classroom, dirt floors, no desks, windows are smashed out. And I gave them all a piece of paper because I thought I was going to do art therapy with them. And I said, okay, guys, draw me your feelings. Nothing. It was not an expression on their faces. They'd been through 10 times more hell than I will ever know in a lifetime. At that stage, I wanted to run. I wanted to get out of there because when they weren't responding, I thought, this is really, this is scary. I'm not qualified to be here. These children need some real serious therapy, not what I'm doing. And then I quickly scrambled in my mind and I realized they were all orphans. They didn't have fathers. I had lost my dad. How, how can I connect? So I took out a, a piece of paper and I drew a picture of my dad. I held up the paper and I said, guys, I, I know a little bit about what you may be feeling because my dad died. And I'd never grieved for my dad, Danny, because I was too scared to feel that pain after my dad died. I was the oldest in the family, took care of the brother and sister, never grieved my dad, didn't cry. But as I held up that picture and I looked at it, all of a sudden my grief came out and I started to sob. I cried so hard. I put my head down and I am crying, snot and tears everywhere. One of the kids comes up and he pats me on the arm and he says, Mr. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. That made me cry even more. Now I'm starting to think of all the cancer kids that I've worked with. So I look up and I say, and you know what? And these kids' eyes are bigger than saucers. And I say, well, I work with children who have cancer. They fight for every single day. All of a sudden, this one kid puts up his hand. He says, excuse me, sir, what is a kid with cancer? And I said, oh, okay, fine. So I told them about the children at the hospital. And now I put down my head, I'm crying even more. I, I wanted to, I, that was the end. I thought I'm done. They're gonna haul me out of there. As I'm crying, Danny, I hear this funny noise. I hear this And I looked up and these children were drawing on their pieces of paper. They were drawing, they were sharing, they were looking at stuff and they were drawing. Um, one little boy put up his hand later, he said, can you tell us more stories about the kids with cancer? And I told them about how brave those kids are and some of my favorite little antics. One kid put his uh, apple juice in his urine sample container and when the nurse came in, he, he drank it and she thought he was drinking pee. Of course, they thought it was great. They wanted me to tell the story a thousand times, of course, which I did. That whole week, we, I used that experience for them, for us to tap into our pain. On the last day, I said to those kids, okay, guys, I said, I want to ask you what you guys like the most in the whole world. They went bananas. They told me about ice cream. They had tasted ice cream the week before for the first time in their lives. So we drew ice cream. We drew the feelings of it, and, and it was wonderful. I got into the car to, 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 to leave the Congo, 
They all came to the gate of the orphanage. Uh, one of the little boys broke away from the crowd and he hands me this little drawstring purse. And inside is a Queen Victoria coin from 1890. So I said, what is this? He said, Mr. Take it. I said, why? He said, Mr. Please, please take it and buy ice cream for the children with cancer. And I did. I bought gallons of ice cream. But what made that little boy find it in his heart to give me something that may have been his most valued treasure because he thought that somebody was worse off than himself. And through that drawing and through that art, they were able to tap into that empathy and that sympathy and that understanding of other people. And all it was was allowing them that space to let it out. It's life-changing. Wow, that's beautiful. Can you just briefly tell us a bit about your sort of history of drawing? Because I know that, like me, you're not, you know, you're not uh, a born artist, but, but you kind of came to it. When I was 12, I wanted to go to art school. We had an art, music, and ballet high school. I wanted to go there for two reasons. I love to draw, and the ballet girls were beautiful. So I'm like, <laughs> that's where I'm heading. So I go to my art teacher, and I asked him if I could please take the, the test to, to get into art school. And he comes back and tells me I'm not talented enough. So I did not do art for school. I put down my pencil, and I didn't draw again until I was in my 30s. So for tw uh, 20 years, I didn't draw. And then in, in my 30s, I'd written a series of children's books because I've been writing since I was a kid. And there was an artist trying to illustrate my book. And I said, no, you're not, this is not, it's not capturing my, my whimsy and my spirit. So he sort of gives me the pencil and he said, well, show me what you mean. And I picked up the, the, the pencil and, and, and I started to draw. And the style that I drew in was just very, very basic. Uh, here, here's one of my books called Under the Big Sky. And uh, that is just the, the very, very simple, basic style that I, I illustrate in. Uh, just to get um, my point across. And so I found that, that messing with little watercolor pictures uh, and, and doing these little drawings um, was, was, was so helpful. And I realized when I was drawing, I felt better about the stress I was carrying out of the hospital when I work with cancer kids and, and out of uh, refugee camps. So putting that down on, in, on, in my countless journals has been has been a necessity. It's actually a lifesaver for me. And I dream about the stuff too. I dream about drawing in my journal. You do too, I know. At night, I'm lying in bed, I'm actually dreaming, I'm dreaming, I'm drawing. It's wonderful. Yes, and then you wake up with ink on your pillow. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> All over my face. Well, thank you, Trevor. It was fantastic talking to you. And uh, I know that your story is going to be super inspiring to so many people. It certainly makes me think, what else can I do? What else can I do with with my art, with my gifts, in terms of communication, how else can we help people? What I really believe strongly is that when you work in the service of others, you overcome a lot of the limitations, the neuroses, the obsessions that you have yourself. That in fact, you know, that being in service of others is, is what makes you your best and allows you to accomplish incredible things with your life. And I think that your, your life is a testament to that, that, that to, you know, to shut the sort of voices in your head that tell you you're no good, you know, there are many people out there who need you and need your help.